Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving Boyle's Law, also known as the Pressure Volume Law. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that the pressure of a gas in a container is 100 kilopascals. The volume of the container is 10 meters cubed. If the volume decreases to 2.5 meters cubed, calculate the new pressure. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the new pressure, which is the same as the final pressure, P2. We know the initial pressure, P1, is 100 kilopascals. The initial volume, V1, is 10 meters cubed, and the final volume, V2, is 2.5 meters cubed. Notice that it's okay to leave pressure, in this case, in kilopascals, as long as we make our final answer in kilopascals as well. So writing down our equation for Boyle's Law, we get P1V1 equals P2V2. Substituting in the numbers gives us 100 times 10 is equal to P2 times 2.5. And now to get P2 on its own, we can divide both sides by 2.5 to get P2 equals 400 kilopascals once you put that into your calculator. Question 2 says a syringe contains 300 centimetres cubed of gas at a pressure of 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals. The piston of the syringe is pulled outwards so that the pressure of the gas falls to 8 times 10 to the 4 pascals. Find the new volume of the gas. So this is the same as asking us for the final volume, i.e. V2. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find V2. We know the initial pressure, P1, is 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals, also known as atmospheric pressure. The initial volume, V1, is 300 centimetres cubed. And the final pressure, P2, is 8 times 10 to the 4 pascals. So notice that the initial volume, V1, is in units of centimetres cubed, which means our final volume, V2, will also be in centimetres cubed. So writing down our equation for Boyle's Law, we get P1V1 equals P2V2. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1 times 10 to the 5 times 300 is equal to 8 times 10 to the 4 times V2. Putting the left-hand side into your calculator and then dividing by 8 times 10 to the 4 gives us V2 on its own, which should give you V2 equals 375 centimetres cubed once you put it into the calculator. Lastly, question 3 says that a deep-sea diver uses a cylinder of compressed air to survive. Deep underwater, the cylinder holds 3 litres of air at a pressure of 12,000 kilopascals. Calculate the initial pressure of the air in the cylinder near the water's surface if the volume of air in the cylinder was 15 litres at this depth. Well, notice firstly that the way this is worded is it's actually giving us the initial values last and the final values first. So it's asking us to calculate the initial pressure P1, and it's telling us that at the depth near the water surface, which will be the initial values, that the volume is 15 litres. So it makes sense to talk about the things near the water surface as being the initial values before the deep sea diver has gone further underwater, which would be the final values. So in this case, we're trying to find P1, the initial pressure, we know the initial volume V1 is 15 litres. We know the final pressure P2 is 12,000 kilopascals. And lastly, the final volume V2 is 3 litres. So notice the final pressure P2 has units of kilopascals. So that means my initial pressure P1 will also have units of kilopascals. So writing down the equation for Boyle's Law, we have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Substituting in the numbers gives us P1 times 15 is equal to 12,000 times 3. Now doing the right-hand side and dividing by 15 gives us P1 on its own, and if you put that into your calculator, we end up with P1 equals 2,400 kilopascals. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.